felt is better for beginners. Bold take. This is a bold take right here. Okay. This is a bold take because you know what, you know, because when I, when I hear that, you know what I think, what is HTMX good for? If Svelte is for beginners, is HTMX for big brain, high IQ, end of the uh, IQ chart, or is it even worse? Is it just for midwits? Am I a midwit? HTMX is for boomers and senior engineers. Senior engineers as in like really old engineers. I get, okay, come on. Enough with the boomer talks, okay? I'm only 37, okay? I'm not a boomer yet. Your definition of a boomer hurts my boomer feelings, okay? Hi, I'm Cameron, and welcome to my TED Talk. I'm here to shout my opinion about front-end frameworks into the endless void of hot takes and terrible opinions. I love the starting of this. This is great. Cameron, you have my respect already. I firmly believe that anyone learning front-end web development should start with Svelte rather than React. I always knew I liked Cameron. I could always tell. I could tell from the beginning of this article that I liked Cameron. I could just, I could feel it in my bones, okay? I could feel it deep down. What is Svelte? The word Svelte is from French. Okay, I don't like Cameron. I thought I liked Cameron, but now I don't like Cameron. Uh, Svelte, meaning slim, slender, which is a perfect description for a framework that prides itself on minimalist design. Svelte was first released in 2016 and recently updated to version 4 in June of this year. I first discovered Svelte around a month ago after seeing it featured on a YouTube video by the Prime Gen. Let's go! Oh, gosh, pre-read, pre-watch. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, I knew I liked Cameron. Let's go, Cameron. My first application in Svelte was a website that replays a competitive programming competition leaderboard on Catus. On the same day that I started that project, I also finished it. Nice. That was a long-ass day. Was it like a 37-hour day? Using Svelte that day made me feel like a superhero. I had informed my competition team about the tool I was going to make for us, and I was able to release it to them on the same day, something I don't think would have been possible if I started out learning a framework like React. Okay, fair. I think that's actually a fair take. My experience with React, let's go, man. This Okay, clearly, clearly, Cameron, Cameron, you wrote this just for me to, you wrote this for me to read. I can tell. I can tell you little, you, you dirty dog. I can just feel it. My first experience with front-end development was using React for my university's competitive programming club website. Nice job. Let's see it. Let's check it out. I did competitive programming, by the way. It's one of the best things you can do. If you haven't done competitive programming, honestly, you are missing out heavily. Competitive programming is a fantastic thing to do at least once in your life. Got regionals, first place regional, ACM, didn't qualify for worlds though. Got pretty dang far though. Huge fan of that type of stuff. Anyways, jumping into the code base was quite the cold shower. When, oh, cold showers are good for you are you saying it's positive for you you having a nice adrenal response in a healthy way when searching for help on the react website you can find some pretty good tutorials to help you learn after a week you should have a firm grasp on most of the concepts that react offers state management still quite tricky sure react's fundamentals aren't impossible but its approach to building uis deviates significantly from traditional development this is something i feel like svelte stays close to okay okay I like this. I like this. What's the difference maker? There are two points I would like to raise on what makes Svelte so much better for beginners. I would say that if you can finish an entire project in a singular day, maybe it's not better for beginners. Maybe it's just better. I've always enjoyed Svelte. Oh my gosh. The way Svelte has structured their tutorial website and documentation is top tier. You also get hit. If you go through the Svelte documentation or the, the tutorial, one of the first things you get hit with is quite the classic. It's beautiful. It's almost like a layout for LeetCode. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it's it's great. Welcome to Svelte. All this kind of stuff. You get to go through everything. Sure. React also has a tutorial on their website. In no way is that tutorial better than Svelte's. React has structured their tutorial through documentation rather than interactive layout like Svelte. Yeah, I think Go did. Go went with this approach, right? your little learn go where you're doing these small interactive websites, I think this makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference to have interactive tutorials. I mean, for me at, at my stage in life, all I want to see is an example in like a one sentence describing the problem that it solves. Like that's what I want to see. Maybe that's in a, incorrect, but I often don't want to have to read the entire documentation just to understand how to use something, right? I just need I just need the zero to sixty really quick. You move on with my life. This may be a personal preference, but when I was learning React, I would have loved something like Svelte's tutorial where every concept could be treated like a lead code problem that I needed to solve. It's just how my brain works. I believe this style of learning is the most productive when it comes to teaching something new in programming. Actually, I, I would agree with this take. Doing it with your hands rather than reading is huge. Reading through docs and seeing examples and stuff like that is really nice after you have a concept, right? Like after you know what you're doing then reading through stuff is like, it, it, it just like you can gain so much understanding, but just cold, like just cold water reading through something. I feel like it's like, it's, it's difficult. Doing it with the hands is huge. Absolutely. Practice is always greater than theory on the initial learn. You need the theory though. You need the theory. 
ah, I can't get over the simplicity of this framework. Everything just makes sense. You want to make a component that adds two numbers together? Script, A, B, input, A, B, bind value, let's go, A plus B, boom, there it is. Now switch to React. Export default, oh, default, oh. <laughs> I can't tell if I like default or, <laughs> or not. Every time I say I hate default, I think I actually like default. And then I just never know. All I know is that export default is the reason why things feel like they can't ever play together nicely. Anyways, okay, you got to use a bunch of states. Uh, there you go. Set target. There you go. We got to set target to this. There we go. Parse int plus parse int plus. I don't know about this parse int business. You use, I don't know about this, this whole parse int business. Is that because you're using target.value and it's not, it's like a, oh no, it's type number. So it should be a number. I'm not really sure about that parse in. You might've accidentally made it a little bit too complicated there. You're explicit returns kind of person. So it makes sense. I am an explicit returns kind of person. My brother and sister in Christ, there is no debate. From someone who used to be a React fanboy to this felt code is easier to read, more enjoyable to write, simple. Agreed. Absolutely agreed to this statement. As a beginner starting out with React, my first thoughts when reading code were, what? <laughs> I think the thing that makes React so hard often is that, I mean, whenever like whenever I read tutorials, everything's really nicely aligned and it's really, really nice and easy. But when I read actual code that somebody has written, it's not by someone who's like a React perfect organizer of code and life and logic. Instead, it's 400 lines of use effect and other crap that go into it. And you're just like, what am I reading? I have to like, I have to learn the universe before I can learn what's happening here. It's very, very difficult. Cameron, I'm taking this. I'm taking it. It's mine. Open source. Open source. I just open sourced your article. Open source that. There you go. I gave you a little, okay, you, got, you got that. You got that. All right, let's keep on going. Sure. At times, verbosity is needed. No, not you, Java. I have three years of pain with Java. I have quite a few years of pain with Java. I understand it. When learning something like front end for the first time, the verbosity can be overwhelming at times, and that's the last thing you want when trying something new. Fair. I mean, there's a lot of complication whenever you're doing any of these things. The tool chain is such a huge pain in the butt when it comes to working with the front end. You know, when you, when you don't even have a concept of what TypeScript is, let alone that TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript that has to be compiled down and that some of your types actually have you know, result in real code and, and you know, like all the things that go into it. And then you have to know like that all comes together and then that all gets loaded onto a website. Then something has to transfer down the scripts. Like the amount of stuff you have to know when running, it's a lot. And people often forget how much knowledge you have to have. And I always say that I feel so bad for people learning to program today. Because when I learned to program, I had to launch NetBeans, write a program, and press play. Like, that's it. You opened up a directory, you created a Java file, and that's like it. That is all there was to it. Now it's like you have to know so much before you actually get to the point of understanding anything that's happening. It's wild. Oh God, grandpa telling war stories again. I think you just forget how simple life was. Right? Because, like, needing to know about HTTP, it's a lot. Whatever. From the trenches. Uh, I've uh, since gone on to rewrite this website in Svelte, and I love it. As a beginner, being able to learn even more about this framework has been exhilarating for me. Some of you argue that Svelte has a smaller community and smaller job market. To that, I argue not everything you'll learn will help you get a job, and the community is ever growing along with the ecosystem. You will learn a lot more about how things work just in basic JavaScript, CSS, and, and, and the HTMLs. You'll learn a lot more. So, this is a good point. Be fun and learn Svelte to help you understand the basics of front-end development with components and reactivity. Svelte has a lot going for it and a proud adopter. I'm excited for the future of Svelte. This was a good enough article. My boy Cameron, you got the follow. I'm number 11. Thank you for such a wonderful article. This was really good. This is actually a really, it's a really good article and I hope that people take a moment to check out Svelte, especially if you're new, because I know there's a lot of you that are super new that just, you're just trying to figure out life. Take a check. I mean, you know me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna always be super into HTMX, but you guys don't have to be. You guys can check out Svelte. You can like it. You can enjoy yourself. Should be a good time. The name. Svelte-a-gen.